Hello everyone, welcome to Life Round Science. Today's video is about the JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope, which is a trending topic in the astro community right now. And you can see NASA just recently posted an article, Photons Received Webb Sees Its First Stars. So it was published on February 11th. And you can see that this is an image which doesn't look that good, but it's fine. So it, for those who don't know, JWST stands for James Webb Space Telescope. It's an infrared telescope which was launched on December 25th and now it has already reached the Lagrange point 2 and it is orbiting over there and it is going a process of mirror alignment at the moment. So if you don't know what I'm talking about you will know more in this video. There are already a lot of videos out there uh, on YouTube and on different media about JWST so the reason I'm making this video is I remember I had given a presentation on JWST about a year ago during my graduate school at Ayuka. So I thought that I could present, I could use the, so I already have the presentation with me and I could explain the slides and make a video on it. So Let's go to the slides. This was prepared one year ago for the graduate school, one of the courses in graduate school. It was related to astronomical instrumentation and it was slightly more technical and the introductory part was just as an introduction. But I thought I'll, while going through this, I will explain all the bits and pieces that the audience I was explaining to had a background in astronomy, so they were familiar with the concepts. But I will try to explain everything so that any science student at least could understand what's going on. A quick introduction. So JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope, is an international collaboration of three organizations. There's NASA from US, ESA, European, European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. The total cost of JWST has been around $10 billion. It started with an original budget of $500 million but clearly it has exceeded its budget. The expected lifetime, it should at least uh, function for five years. 10 years is what is expected, and it could even go on for 20 years or so. So as I said, it mainly focuses on the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The wavelengths covered are from 0.6 micrometers to 28 micrometers. You can convert these in any familiar units like nanometers or angstroms, and you can see it starts from somewhere around orange color in the visible spectrum, orange red, and then goes into near infrared and then mid infrared. Its main focus is the infrared region. So as you can see, I had presented it about a year ago. So that this was the latest news. NASA's James Webb telescope completes final functional test to prepare for the launch. So this particular project has had a bad history of delays in the launch. Uh, so it has been delayed for quite some years and finally this was the news that it has completed its test and now we know that it has been launched on 25th December already. So what are the uh, science objectives of this telescope? Why is it, what is it going to do over there exactly? What science uh, can we get out of this mission? So these are the four, four main objectives. So first is the first light and reionization. The first light refers to the epoch in the universe where we had our first light. So the universe was dark. So it started with the Big Bang. It was hot. There was radiation everywhere, which is today's CMB. And after that, the combination took place at neutral atoms uh, formed and light started streaming freely. And that light is now our CMB. But there was no visible light. So there was a period in the history of universe where the universe was completely dark until the first stars and galaxies were formed. So JWST, one of the ob uh, objectives of it is to study these first objects which started emitting light and also the reionization epoch. Astronomers usually talk in uh, units of redshift. So higher the redshift, the further we are talking about or further in the past we are talking about. So there was an epoch where all the matter in between the galaxies and everywhere, which is mostly hydrogen, was neutral. And now if you see around all this intergalactic medium which is hydrogen it turns out that it is most of it is ionized we call this reionization the assembly of galaxies so basically if these how the galaxies form the structure formation it is also going to study the birth of stars and protoplanetary systems 
planetary systems and the origin of life. A good chunk of its time will be given to study exoplanets because planets we know we all radiate in infrared. There will be molecular emission coming from exoplanets and JWST. Since uh, it is in space, it won't have any background of infrared, it would have less noise and it will be the perfect candidate to study these exo exoplanets and origin of life. As I said, it has been launched to the Lagrange point L2. So here is an image. Here, here we have the sun, earth, the moon, and these are the five Lagrange points. So what are Lagrange points? So if the sun and the earth were fixed over here, so we have these two bodies. And if I tell to calculate which is the point where the gravitational force is zero, you will calculate a point somewhere in the middle of these two where both the attractive forces of these two bodies get cancelled. But Earth is revolving around the sun, so it is going around. So if you go in this rotating frame, so there are other forces like centrifugal, Coriolis in some cases, depending on the motion. So these pseudo forces will uh, start acting. And if we in this co-moving or co-rotating frame if we try to calculate points where the net force is zero so it turns out there are five points in this co-rotating frame in which if you place an object it will stay as it is with respect to the sun and earth so basically if the earth is going around if we place an object at the point l1 with the same angular velocity as that of earth so it will always stay in the middle of sun and earth as it is going around. So there are five such points. Some of these are stable, some of these are unstable. So what do I mean by that? Like if you put an object uh, at an unstable point and if you move it, perturb it slightly away from this point, it will go further away from this point. There are certain stable orbits. So if you put an object there and perturb it a little, it will come back to that point. It's just the concept of stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium. So JWST will be going to this Lagrange point L2. Why is that? First of all, the advantage of putting it in Lagrange point it, is that it always remains at a fixed position with respect to the Earth at the same distance, always away from the Sun. Secondly, it will be able to shield itself from this solar radiation and any light or any energy coming from Earth and Moon also. And it will look in the other direction. This is a model of JWST. So this is the main mirror assembly. This is the primary mirror. Light will come here. It will reflect off. It will go to the secondary mirror. It will finally reflect off from there and go inside where there is a tertiary mirror. And at the back we have the back plane, uh, which will act as a support for this mirror. And as well as there are and also there are actuators which will help in alignment, which is currently going on. There is an ISIM model in which is the science module where all the imaging and spectroscopy will be done. This is a sun shield and this will shield it from the sun and keep this telescope and the science part cool. And this is the sp uh, spacecraft bus and star tracker. This is the JWST website. Here we can see the timeline. So since the launch, we have the Earth and here is the Lagrange point two. Our telescope has already le reached the Lagrange point two and is orbiting. So right now we are in the mirror alignment stage. That's where this image comes in. Now the mirrors are not all aligned. Now each of the hexagonal segments will be uh, adjusted one by one so as to get a perfect image. This is an interesting thing on this website. Here we can observe the solar system. This is JWST. First let's look at the earth. So here is the earth. As you can see here it's night and you can see different satellites in orbit. So since here it's night, so sun is over there. So that's why we have the day over here. We can see the International Space Station over here. We have the Hubble Space Telescope over here, which was currently one of the best. And we can also see the IXPE over here. This X-ray polar emitter that we have up in space, about which we had posted a while ago. So here it is. So let's go back to earth so i already showed you the lagrange point is on the earth sun axis and away from the earth so the sun is over here okay and if you look in exactly opposite direction zoom out a bit you should see jwst somewhere there it is so the lagrange point l2 is exactly behind this dark patch of earth and we can already see that JWST is over here. It is orbiting that L2 point. So now let's go and have a look at the JWST. I've already shown you how it looks. 
so this is the sun shield so it should be so this sun shield should point at the sun let's see if we can find the sun yes it's exactly blocking the sun there is the earth and the moon so it's blocking that too because these are the major sources of infrared radiation so you can see this is the primary mirror we have the science model behind the secondary mirror the sun shield this is the back plane this is an antenna which points to the earth we have solar panels and star trackers if i turn this off this is how it actually is we have light on this part and this part is completely dark it completely shadows the telescope and cools it down let's go to the inner solar system so here is the sun here is earth we can also see the parker solar probe this is the earth sun axis and if we look in the exactly opposite direction there this should be the l2 point if we zoom out more you can see how far it is this is the earth moon distance go up And this is the James Webb Space Telescope, and there is our sun. And the James Webb Space Telescope is orbiting this Lagrange point L2. So right now, as I said, it is going in the mirror alignment. All these actuators are working with a precision of one ten, one ten thousandth of a thickness of the hair, and there's a they are being adjusted so as to make this photo better. Here, I'm showing the image of the sun shield that is being used. So there are basically five layers. So this we blocking the sun as well as earth as well as moon as you know these are the brightest and closest objects especially when we are talking about infrared radiation each of these layers is made of captain material called captain which is heat resistant it is coated with aluminium so as to be reflective and is doped with uh, silicon so that it can conduct and can act as electrical ground for the entire telescope so the light would come and it will be most of it will be reflected if it is not reflected it will be reflected by the second layer and there are certain gaps that are left because so that if light comes it can undergo multiple reflection between between these layers and escape out from the side and never enter the telescope side furthermore there will be vacuum between these two layers so that would anyway act as insulator this assembly is perfect because we are putting it at l2 point if we maintain the shield to uh, to face the sun jwst will be always blocked from the sun and the earth and the moon so that's why l2 point is really useful as you can see the sun facing side which will be this the side below would be at around 383 kelvin and the detector side just because of this uh, cooling and any other cryogenics if in place would be around 36 kelvin so this great amount of shielding is provided by this very essential part of GWST. we usually talk about sun sunblock sunscreen which we apply when we're going out on the sunny day we talk about the spf the sun protection factor it being 15 30 50 we boast about <laughs> the advertisements boast about having higher spf so if we calculate the corresponding factor of shielding that this particular module of the jwst provides it turns out it's around a million spf so you can imagine how efficient it is in blocking sunlight so these are the parts which i had covered very quickly very briefly but it has a lot of physics involved so let me know if you want me to cover this